Today's episode of Variant is brought to you by Squarespace. Today on Variant, I give you the history of the Weapon X program. Welcome to Variant, where we love comics more than I wish I had Wolverine's healing abilities. I'm your host, Eris Quinones. For today's episode, I did a poll several weeks back asking what history of episode you all wanted to see out of four choices I listed. And the Weapon X episode was the one the majority of you voted for, hence today's episode. So let's start talking about the program Wolverine made so famous. Jumping right into it, Weapon X was first mentioned in the first appearance of Wolverine in The Incredible Hulk issue 180 in 1974, since which it has been implied that he was connected to a shady government program. In the 1991 Marvel Comics Presents story arc titled Weapon X, the project was designated Experiment X, and it was revealed that it was responsible for bonding the adamantium to Wolverine's skeleton, making him indestructible and giving him his famous shiny claws that can cut through almost anything. It also brainwashed him in order to bring out his most basic murderous instinct and to transform him into the perfect assassin. Weapon X operated through Canada's Department K and was directed by Professor Andre Thornton. At his side was Dr. Abraham Cornelius, Dr. Carol Hines, and Dr. Dale Rice. John Sublime, the director of Weapon Plus, was also behind the scenes. Some of the work Weapon X was based on was the experiments detailed in the journals of Nazi scientist Nathan Essex, which was obtained by Weapon Plus after the end of World War II. The project's original test subjects were members of Team X, a covert ops CIA team. Some of the members were Wolverine, Sabretooth, Maverick, Silver Fox, and Mastodon. The telepath cyborg was involved in the creation of the victim's memory implants, in exchange for being endowed with immortality. The test subjects were policed by Shiva, should any of the agents go rogue. What Wolverine and his fellow X-Men ignored for many years is that Weapon X was part of a larger program called Weapon Plus, a United States super soldier program created in the 1940s, with the purpose of creating super soldiers and assassins. And yes, you are correct in thinking that Weapon Plus is the same program that gave Steve Rogers his powers, which in turn made him Captain America. The exact name for the program that gave Steve Rogers his powers was Weapon 1, which is within the Weapon Plus program. The Weapon X experimentation on Wolverine would cause him to go on a murderous rampage, which allowed the escape of other test subjects, and caused the death of Dale Rice, among dozens of other members of the Weapon X staff both scientists and military. Weapon X was temporarily shut down and the facility was created as a branch off organization with similar goals of creating genetically altered weapons and soldiers. Some of their attempts at recreating the success seen by Weapon X with Wolverine included the feral woman called Native, Kimura, and X-23. She's called X-23 because she was the 23rd attempt to clone Wolverine. She was trained to kill Wolverine, but instead she joined the X-Men, becoming his daughter figure and eventually became his successor. Then we have Department K. At some point, Weapon X branched off from Weapon Plus's control and was solely headed up by Canada's Department K and a new generation of agents were created. Most famously, of course, was fan favorite Deadpool. But you also have Garrison Kane who took on the moniker Weapon X, Slayback, Sluggo, Wild Child, and Ajax, among others. Weapon X used Logan's DNA in order to endow its agents with healing powers. But as fate would have it, the batch produced many additional failures, which were sent to a facility for dissection to determine the cause for said failures. These rejects were freed by Deadpool when he escaped from the facility. Director Malcolm Colcord would form the third version of the Weapon X project, designed to monitor and eliminate mutants. Colcord was once a security guard at the first Weapon X program, but he suffered severe face lacerations during an escape attempt by Wolverine. Unlike the previous two installments of Weapon X, the third project was completely US based and focused not only on the creation of living weapons, but also on the ultimate goal of Colcord, the creation of death camps. So he's just a little bit evil. The director initially uses Weapon X as his personal strike force to exact revenge against Wolverine. Because remember, as I said a few seconds ago, he's holding a grudge against Wolverine for the whole cuts to the face thing. He soon begins utilizing its resources for the capturing and imprisonment of mutants in the secret government death camp called Neverland. Land. Mutants who are not suitable to be used as military weapons would be executed, while those who are suitable are given the choice to join Weapon X or die. The agents of this Weapon X incarnation were Agent Brent Jackson, a former S.H.I.E.L.D. agent, Sabretooth, who was given new adamantium implants, the shapeshifter Copycat, the Merc with the Mouth Deadpool, and Malvis. Later on, however, Deadpool went rogue and new members were recruited into Weapon X, many of whom had their powers enhanced or were brainwashed into servitude. And kinda random, but I do want to mention Maverick, purely because I always liked the way the character looked. Anyway, when Maverick refused to be an agent of this Weapon X, Sabretooth almost killed him. Malcolm Colcord again offered him a chance to join as he still could be saved. 
Needless to say, this time he reluctantly agreed. Thus, his powers were enhanced with the purpose of assassinating Wolverine, and he went by the new name Agent Zero, who, fun fact, was created by one of my favorite artists, Jim Lee. Then, skipping ahead a bit in the aftermath of Avengers vs. X-Men, Cyclops and his team of uncanny X-Men have taken up residency in the Weapon X facility. They rebuilt the facility and named it the new Charles Xavier School for the new mutants that began appearing. And that, my friends, is my very brief summary of the Weapon X program. Clearly, there is some stuff I left out, but I think you guys get the point. And now you're probably all like, I want to read some Weapon X stories. Well, don't worry, I got you covered. You have Wolverine Weapon X, Death of Wolverine, the Weapon X program, Wolverine The Return of Weapon X, Wolverine Old Man Logan, Deadpool Classic Volume 1, and Deadpool Classic Volume 2, just to name a few. Squarespace is the easiest way to create a beautiful website, blog, or online store for you and your ideas. Squarespace features an elegant interface, beautiful templates, and incredible 24-7 customer support. Their sites look professionally designed regardless of skill level, and there's no coding required. They have intuitive and easy-to-use tools, and you get a free domain if you sign up for a year. Start building your website today at squarespace.com and enter the offer code VARIANT at checkout to get 10% off. And remember, Squarespace, you should. First up for Wednesday, February 17th, we have Amazing Spider-Man Issue 8. Spider-Man is facing off with Mr. Negative once again. Here we have Star Wars Issue 16, Rebel Jail Starts Now. The Rebels travel to a prison base having taken an important captive, Invader Down. Finally, we have Robin, Son of Batman Issue 9. Damien and Goliath are reunited. The fur is gonna fly in Gotham City as Damien tries to keep the collateral damage for Goliath's return to a minimum. And that, my friends, brings yet another episode of Variant to a close. But remember, you can always like our Variant Facebook page to keep up with the show and all things comic related. You can also follow Variant on Twitter at Variant Comics or me on Twitter at Eris underscore Quinones. And if you like the channel, be sure to subscribe. But I'll see you guys next week when I talk about all things comics. Puppy monkey baby. Puppy monkey baby. Puppy monkey baby. Puppy monkey baby. Puppy monkey baby.